Well, I've got, to, I've got to, I, I hate this bit because we've just been talking. You can't really go, all right, Richie, not seen you for a while when we've just been talking for a minute. That feels weird, doesn't it? I don't, yeah, I don't know how, how people can do that. So, uh, well, uh, we're here. I don't know how many people will get on the live stream tonight because we're competing tonight with so many. I don't know if you've noticed, we're competing with so many other things. Uh, so, uh, Sean Winter's doing something at half past seven. <clears throat> right, okay. Uh, and uh, the... Uh, um, there's something else going on. I can't remember what it was. There is a live stream at the turf. I think it is. Yeah, I think the Eat More Chips lads uh, are doing a live stream from the turf. So we will uh, we will see what uh, what happens. Um, but uh, we oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Well, we, do we let him in now or what? I don't know. Now he's late. Should we just laugh as we let him in? <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, doing his air, probably. Oh, hello, Alex. How are you doing? Late. 1845, we were on. 645. Yeah, we were on. We, we, you know. What can I say? At least I'm here. <laughs> oh, good. Nice to see you anyway. How are you doing? Yeah, very good. Very Excellent. good, especially Excellent. after uh, the last two matches. Yeah, feel, feel the, feel the weight has been lifted, hasn't it, a little bit? So that's uh, that is a uh, that is a, a bit of a uh, a bit of a boost for us. So uh, usual stuff tonight. Let's start. Let's do our let's do our um, housekeeping, uh, and then we'll say hello to a few people that are creeping into the uh, to the chat and stuff. Um, so. Um, there are multiple ways that you can, I guess, follow us. Um, we we obviously do the live stream, which is on YouTube for everybody. So that's cool. You can watch that whenever, either live or when, uh, whenever you want afterwards. You can uh, download the audio podcast, which will go up probably tomorrow. Um, I have to get that done ASAP because uh, you can also listen to that podcast on Premier Radio Wrexham. So that goes out at six o'clock now. We've got prime time viewing at six o'clock on a Thursday now. Um, we've shifted it. So uh, so multiple ways that you can catch up with uh, with Alex's golden nuggets. <laughs> uh, uh, and the rest of our ramblings. Uh, and you should also subscribe and, and all that jargon because that's good um so let's get into before we kick off let's just say uh, a few hellos because uh, i know there's a oh well yes i might uh, i might see if steve wants to come in so josh is for josh uh, if you don't watch the local pundit you should do josh is um currently in a meeting with somebody and live i'm watching our live stream on his ipad um, Josh is one of like if you know anything about film and TV, this is one of the most the most connected people I've ever known. Like his missus was a producer on June two and June one, and uh, he knows like Max Beasley, who's just been the gentleman, and he's trying to get Vinnie Jones on his show and all sorts of goodness. So uh, Josh is in uh, he was in Netflix's uh, Netflix for a meeting the other day. He was sending pictures from their uh, their 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 holding up their holding room and stuff. So. Uh, Go and follow Josh. Uh, and while you're there, you will also see Ivan. So Ivan's in New Zealand. Good evening, Ivan. Um, Ivan's a good follow because you'll get some very balanced views on Wrexham. Should we should we uh, should we be nice about it? Yep. There's no glass half full with Ivan. It's uh, it's definitely uh, definitely a, 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 a very neutral uh, approach. Uh, Steve is in the house. Good evening, Steve. So the voice of the race course. I was with him in the Mice Gwyn for a little bit last night, um, just while we had pre-match drinks. So uh, we saw him there. I didn't see Emma last night, but she's here. Uh, good evening, Emma. Hope you're all right. Um, have I missed anybody? Aaron is. We've got Aaron and John in Kentucky. Uh, I think that's that's everybody who's who's chimed up uh, and said hello. So, um, what do we know generally? Anything exciting going on? Or are we just... Oh, Kieran's here as well. Uh, anything exciting going on for anybody? Or are we just heads down, working hard, and we're just getting on with the football? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Um, living from game to game until we can just get over the line. And then the sooner we can do that, the better, really, because then the pressure's off then, isn't it? So... Uh, you know, we'll see. 
Michael's in from South Africa. How is it, mate? Are you okay? Uh, and Josh just said hello. Okay, so not much news about, um, but I thought we'd just pick up on one or two things. Um, and then we'll go into the usual format. We'll go over <clears throat> Colchester, then Crawley, and then we'll look ahead to, how did you describe it, Richie? The vegetarians? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. <laughs> we'll look ahead to Forest Green um, on Saturday, and um, we'll go from there. So, uh, bits of news-wise, has anything caught anybody's eye this week, news-wise? Just interested to see if anybody's picked up on <clears throat> the, uh, the story that I did or... Uh, uh, Alex started a chant at Colchester, I believe, which Paul Mullen didn't like. Oh, well, well <laughs> <laughs> um, was Brilliant. that you, was it, Alex? <laughs> we, it was in your shorts as well, were you? Oh, it's 15 degrees now, shorts like weather summer. every match, yeah. Um, I'm sure we'll get on to Paul Mullen. Well, let's talk, we talk about it in the news if you want. We can talk about it now if you want. I wasn't gonna, I will, I, 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 I don't know, I've. <laughs> I, I flip flop between thinking, well, just get on with it, lads, and win some games and play a bit better, and nobody will say anything. Um, I mean, it's a that's a if you've been to many away games, that's a chant that only really gets sang when you're when you're winning. It's ironic because we've had some um, uh, disappointing performances. It's not actually sung that much. Um, I just I, I I was listening to Tim at the Fearless podcast, and he just said just. What I, he said it's it's um it's something about nothing and he's reacted quite badly to it and I can see why he's thinking that but we'll go to Alex next because Alex is shaking his head so let's go to let's go to you before we go to you Richie and just get your yeah. thoughts on it um and then we'll do proper stories then um I don't think it is much to do about nothing I think um is it's a decent talking point. Um, we always say as fans, let's get behind the team, let's do all we can to support the team. And you go on Twitter on match day and you see all the tweets saying, right behind the lads from the off, give them our full support, make it horrible for the other team. And if players like Mullin and other players in the squad are in the dressing room saying, I don't like that, why are they singing that? It's a bit demoralising. Um, I think we should stop singing it. it doesn't take much think... to, to stop singing a song. Um, I think if any player can come out and say that, it is Mullen. Yeah, he's got that sort of legendary status where he can um make a rallying call or a request to the fans without any backlash. Um, but if the players don't like it, stop singing it. There's we've got hundreds of other songs we can sing instead. Move on. Yeah, I don't think they will. I don't think it will get sung again. But Richie, go on, give us your uh, <clears throat> give us your take. I think he was out of order to come out and say it. Yeah, I can see um, why you think that. And <clears throat> I don't think he was out of order to say it. I'm, I think there was perhaps the way he said it might have been a bit, you yeah, know, taken the wrong way. Put a spin on it a different way, perhaps. You know, let's be honest. You know, cool. Newport away, Accrington away, we were horrendous in the yeah. games, and they didn't. They, they didn't get on the players' backs at all. Um, you know, okay, there's been a maybe you, you might hear the odd boo now and again, but for some of the away performances we put in, yeah, um, and people do pay their hard cash, you know, it's a yeah. long way down yeah. uh, traveling, uh, down you know, especially down, down south games as well. It's um, you know, Gillingham, we weren't very good, yeah, but nobody, nobody gave them a load of grief at the end of the game, no, they still get applauded good. and. He was actually off. one of the ones who, who who applauded the fans and rushed off the pitch, Mullin, yeah. because I was there to see it. Yeah, it's just I just think you know somebody else made a good point. I thought you should be concentrating on the game, not listen to the words of the song. Yeah, I think um, yeah, you know I did hear the tongue in cheek comment. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, I think it. I, hopefully, it's forgotten about now and it's moved on. Yeah, but I don't think it went down quite well because we know now, don't we? We only have to sneeze and it's in the public domain, isn't it? With the press. And a couple of people have made a big thing of it. Um, as in an article I've seen, um, not so rosy now for Ryan and Rob, top star. Yeah. Goes out to fans, as they're all going to, aren't they? Get the spun. Yeah. Yeah. Just spun it and just pick up on things. But I just didn't think it was necessary to be said. 
Okay. I think that the, the thing is, 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 as well as the fans are entitled to sing what they want, Moles is entitled, and the players, who, in whatever situation, are also entitled to say what they want, aren't they? That's the that's the ultimate. Uh, that's the ultimate. Have you? Did you have a spill, Alex? Is that what it was? I just spilled a drink. Yeah, <laughs> to come off camera for a bit. That's all right, mate. Don't worry. Um, so the, everybody's entitled to say what they want. I don't think that song will get sung. Um, I'm not sure how they've. Because of the irony of it, I'm not sure how that's been missed um, along the way. But either way, I think that's the reason I wasn't really going to talk about it tonight, because I, I don't think that song will get sung again, personally. I think after Mull's sort of saying that, I think uh, I, I'll be surprised um, if, it's, uh, if it's sung again. Um, but you pay your money, you're entitled to, to have your say, aren't you? That's uh, that's the old saying, um, and I think that's been the, uh, the the sort of message. And like like Richie says, you know, uh, it, they've they've had support. Every, they've all had support. It's not that it's not like it's all the time, is it? No. Uh, and it is an ironic sort of song sang when we're uh, when we're winning. And there was another. What was the other one? There was another song as well. I can't remember. Um, there was two technically, wasn't there? But I can't. I, it's gone from memory what the other one was. But um, uh, either way, I say I don't think it'll be an issue now. Um, um, but he's entitled to his opinion, and I think uh, I, I think the fans are entitled to say what they want if you've paid your money. Um, so okay, uh, bigger news though. I've just wanted to pick out some of the bones about this cop extension. Have you seen the? Did yeah. you hear? Did you hear the news about the extension to the cop? Um, uh, I, I don't know if you did as well, Alex. That the uh, the amount of time that the cop uh, the, the temporary cop is up uh, has been extended. Yeah. Uh, and there was an article written, and there was just something in it that I think, uh, if I can find it, yeah, that, that's the one. I just want to make sure I share the right screen. If I find it, I think we'll get a we'll get a bit of a timeline for what's going on. I think so. Um, the, that article there that I've just shared uh, is from the leader, and it's just basically saying they've just sort of, for want of a better word, they've just dynamically agree, uh, agreed to, to to let the cop stay up for. I think it's going to be fourteen months now. That I keep calling it the cop. If, if I say cop, you know what I mean, right? It's the temporary cop is what I'm referring to. Um, so they've agreed to dynamically do it for. So that basically covers the end of this month and all of next season, right? So, um, obviously, you can't have the, that temporary cop up while you're building the actual cop. Uh, if it just wouldn't be, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be allowed to do that. Um, and there was just a sentence in um, in that article, um, uh, which basically says, "My understanding with the funding and the development is that it will be taking place during the summer of 2025." Um, so, I think that gives us our timeline now. I think you could expect to see the temporary cop. Um, for all of next season, and then that summer is uh, is going to be when obviously they'll they'll rip it down and probably start um, start the uh, start the building work because it's been a little bit of a, is it happening this summer next summer when's it happening? Um, I think I, I I mean I don't know whether you agree. Otherwise, I don't understand why we would have extended the temporary cop if we knew we were going to be knocking it down this summer, for instance. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So is anybody surprised by that or did we think we were, is that where we thought we were anyway? Because I was a little bit surprised. I'm not, it doesn't necessarily bother me, but um, I was a little bit surprised that uh, that that, uh, that that was the time frame that they were looking at now. It surprised me because I thought, um, just on this, that though, obviously we should have, it should be clarity come from the club, shouldn't it itself? This yeah, is I where, yeah, I get that. This is where, it was a big thing of people having to go to the trust before Rob and Ryan took over that they weren't, you know, speaking to the fans. There was stuff going on that, you know, even if it was Humphrey does all the podcasts or, you know, we just literally put it on the website. And yeah. Just put, then this is the reason why everyone knows then um, and it can go, OK, no problem. We, we deal with it for 12 months and then we, we, we just let it happen when it happens, really. Yeah. Yeah, no. I uh, any, any, anything to add on it, Alex, or, or is it? Just, are you a bit passive with it? It's just it is what it is, and we just uh, we just you know. Yeah, there's nothing much we can do. Um, yeah. I do agree with Ruby Slippers. 
Yeah. Sorry, I forgot Ruby Slippers is real. Jesse, name. Yeah. Jesse, yeah. I mean, short term, it's good news. We'll get onto the football later, and I'm touching wood here, but there's a very good chance we're going to be playing in League One next season. Yeah. So to have those extra 2,500 ish seats for the start of the season, mm. when there's a buzz, when big teams come to town, that's a bonus. I'm thinking short term here. It's nice to have that stand, but obviously it'll have to come down and we'll take a year to build the new one. Yeah. But all going well, it'd be nice to have a four sided ground when we go into League One next year. If if we uh, do the business in these next three matches. Yeah, well, I think we're going to do the business. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I think that's, uh, I think, oh, well, as we'll come on to now, I think that's, it's in, it's it's sort of in our fingertips now. It's not in our hands yet, but it's in our fingertips, isn't it? We can just feel promotion. Uh, oh, yes, you can. Come on. Let's have some... all, all it takes is a loss on Saturday and an MK Don's win and it's twitchy bum time. Oh, uh, it's not happening. You're normally you're normally really positive, Alex. You're getting nervous now, aren't you? Squeaky bum time, yeah. Squeaky, Squeaky bum, time. bum time. Um the only other thing to say around the news was obviously the women lost uh at Cardiff. Uh that was their last game of the season, I think, wasn't it? They lost League game, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was yeah, sorry, they've got the cup uh, the cup game. Yeah. Um and what they finished in third place. I think that's uh, that's a, a really good sort of season for them. They know the benchmarks now. They, they you know they'll have had a feel for what's what's what. Um, obviously, they could still snatch a trophy. Well, you know you can never count your chickens, can you? So we'll see what happens there. Uh, but they should be really proud of themselves the way that they've taken to that because that was a big step up for them. Um, and I'm sure this summer that we'll see perhaps a, a bit of a, a bit of extra uh, a bit of extra. I'm going to call it recruitment for want of a better word. Uh, I like that Ruby's just picked up on me mate there, Del Morgan. Uh, so Dell's Dell's hundredth appearance. Um, so uh, so yeah, I think uh, I think that you know they they might be feeling disappointed because they've had a couple of three you know a couple of couple, not hidings but a couple of disappointing results. But they're against mainly been against Cardiff, who are the best side in that division by a mile, aren't they? So uh, yeah. you know I know the Swansea one was probably the one that will rankle them a, a bit a bit more to be honest because uh, that should have been that that would they would have thought they'd have had a better chance there. Um, so I think that's it for news, uh, unless anybody else has got anything that I've missed or that I don't know about. Happy Ben Foster Day to everyone. Uh, ben Foster Day, yeah, I did see that before, to be fair. So uh, a year to the day since uh, that game, I guess we should should say, really, um, uh, which is just bonkers, really, isn't it? And when you watch it again, there's like a four or five minute highlight package that they've uh, that they've put out. And um it is just uh, just bonkers that uh, John's just asking if there's any uh, any news on the training ground. Um, I don't know if you're in the Discord for the local pundit, John, but I did write a bit of stuff about the uh, the training ground this morning. So if you are, go and have a look at that um, because in theory that is another. They want 22 acres, 10, 12 pitches, two or three rooms. That's a, that's another thirty million pound investment, basically. Uh, so I think we'll probably just focus on the cop for now, uh, and in the background, they'll probably that'll be an afterthought. Do we? Do we? You know, I don't think we've got that much money to throw around freely, willy nilly. Um, I think this cop has probably escalated in cost in the time it's taken, um, and obviously with not getting all the funding totally for it. That's probably, uh, you know, you just have to prioritise, don't you? And I don't want us to overcommit on on money. You know, you've still got a first team to put out, an academy to build, in effect, haven't we? Do you know what I mean? That costs money, all the new staff for those for that academy and stuff. So, uh, so yeah. Oh, Kath just said about Mendy. Um, so, yeah, Mendy, put, I don't know if you both saw Mendy's either Instagram yeah. post or his tweet. Um, I guess we can touch on that because he's put out a message basically... He didn't say that his season is over, but he's kind of implied that his season is over. Um, he said it, it was a weird tweet because he kind of implies like this is the first time he's ever been injured. And I was a bit like, <laughs> yeah, like Alex is big. I'm like, well, uh, yeah, it happens all the time, Jacob. So, uh, um, so yeah, his season's over, which is a bit of a pain, I guess, in hindsight, a good move that we got McFadden back in the squad, Rich. Uh, <laughs> he'll be for emergencies only, however, won't he? Yes, very, very urgent. Yes, yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we're not going to have Jacob, which probably means 
McLean, we're probably as we are now, aren't we? McLean's going to have to play left back, left wing back. Elliot Lee is probably going to have to start, whether you wanted to rest him or not. He's probably going to have to start. Um, so we're uh, we're kind of at, we are where we are with that, aren't we? I think, uh, um, unfortunately. Um, all right, so let's let's talk about the real stuff though, uh, and we'll, as always, we'll go chronological order. Um, and I guess Alex, give us a give us a flavour of the build up to Colchester. Um, yeah, good atmosphere, um, nice day, Easter conditions, weren't affected by the wind. Um, pitch was crap. <laughs> pitch was crap, though. Pitch wasn't the best. The beach, yeah. sorry, the beach wasn't the best. <laughs> the beach. <laughs> pitch, beach, yeah. No, it was good. Um, plenty of Wrexham fans in the dog and pheasant, which is about a 10 minute walk from the ground. Right. Um, good atmosphere in the away end. And um, yeah, it was a decent build up to the game. And you know what? I can't remember what happened. I had about six pints before the match. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest, it wasn't very much apart from the goals uh, in reality. Um, you know, it wasn't a, 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 a very memorable sort of swashbuckling performance by any. It was one of those that you have to win at the end of the season, in it, if you if you go in for promotion or a cup or something. Oh. Um, it was a result rather than a performance, I think, is what we got. 100%. This time of the season, it's all about winning. Stumble over the line. Doesn't matter how you win. And for 60 minutes, we were awful. It was an awful match in general. Colchester offered nothing either. Yeah. And as we've seen before, it takes a goal to, to spark us into life. But fair play to us. When we did go 1-0 down, we were much, much the better team. Dominated and... Probably just about deserved to win in the end. Just about. Um, so, in terms of the lineup, I was just a little bit surprised that Fletcher. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. That I was just surprised that Fletcher come in. I know there was those talks about Ollie being ill in the week, um, or being under the weather in some way, shape, or form. But I was still surprised that Fletcher started. Or am I on my own there, or is there any agreement on that? No, I, I I predicted he'd start as well. Oh, did you? Right. Yeah. Only because... That because of the illness or what? No, that's just because of the way Parker is with his strikers, isn't he? Right. He's still, he's still searching. He's still finding. Yeah. I, yeah. There's only, you know, the, it's as if the, whoever partners Moles can only do three consecutive games and then it has to be a change, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Okay. Um all right, so I, I was probably on my own. I was probably on my own there then, but uh, with with, uh, with Ollie. Um the goals, because uh, there's not a lot of other talking points other than the goals. The goal, the goal is sloppy um, from the point of view that you've got I mean, McLean ends up slipping, I think, uh, just on the edge of the box. Arthur should do a bit better with it. He'll be disappointed with that. Um, I think he might even get a hand on it, um, but, I th but the bounce of the pitch probably deceives him a little bit. Um, it's hard to predict the bounce on a pitch like that. So you you've got to you know you've only got to be an inch your hands only got to be an inch too high or too low and you haven't got the strength to keep that ball out. So he would have definitely kicked his kicked himself and gone. Oh, I should have done better there. Um, so that doesn't that doesn't help us. Um, but then what we do get is uh, of course uh, miss, uh, you know, step up step up the man in it, Richie as always. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think it was a bit of. It was a shame that the hundredth goal wasn't. Um, how can you say this? It was important, but it wasn't sort of like like a winner. You mean or something? Celebrated more. No. Like the oh right. Okay. Yeah, right. The most scored first, didn't he? Yeah. So the hundredth goal wasn't celebrated more, if that makes sense. Right. Um, because we all knew it was coming, wasn't it? And it, a lot of people were were glad to be there to see it because I know a few people were were dying for that. Um, but then. Just the player of the season, I think. Just strolled through and what a header it was. What a fantastic yeah. header. But it was a great ball as well from Barney. Yeah. I think that gets overlooked. He does he, yeah. he does really well on the touchline to keep the ball in. Uh, if you haven't seen it back, you might need to watch it back to, to get your memory. But he does really well to keep it in and then puts the, puts it on a on a sixpence. Yeah, he does. It, um, you know, to get that the direction as well, because it was quite far out as well, to be fair to him. Um and just, uh, just quickly on that pitch, while I remember, you, you ever used to have one of them etch your sketches? Yeah. You draw the lines. Yeah, yeah. Just drawing the lines on the pitch. 
I was talking about this. We were surprised they hadn't sprayed them. I don't know yeah. if you could see them, Alex, or whether it was a TV thing. You could see the sort of remnants of the previous pitch, well, yeah. the previous markings. Yeah, you know what? We didn't notice it until we saw it on the highlights. Right. I think when you're behind the goal, you don't quite see the, the lines on the pitch. But it's interesting that they made the pitch smaller yeah. to try and contain us and stop the ball. Well, that was because of the weather. That was because they'd had the games called off. So they'd done that to uh, to alleviate the water logging in certain areas. So that's why they'd actually done it. That's oh, how they got her. Because they were, if you remember, they were way behind in games at one point. Um, so it wasn't just for us. They had they they had dispensation to do it. Um, and they uh, I don't know if they twisted it a little bit as well, but they've uh, some of those some of those some of those beach areas were, <laughs> were very interesting. Um so, uh, so yeah, but that, that the irony of it is that actually that benefited us because the, the Hasselhoff pitch, as uh, Josh refers to it as, um, because if you think about Max's goal, that comes from a long throw from George Evans, who he'd had one or two before, which kind of were like, they weren't anywhere near as, as, as zippy as Tozer's, they were just sort of lobs. Um, but he probably doesn't. If he's doing that on the race course, he probably doesn't score that goal. It's helped us the fact that he does. It is on the smaller pitch. But what a header! In fairness to Max, of all the players, that was and you know that's the, the follow up. Of what you know, what a what a time to get your first league goal. Yeah, if I could have picked anyone to score the winning goal, it would be Max. Yeah. He deserves it based on his performances ever since he came into the team. Um, is it Christmas time ish? Um, and I like how modest he is as well. At the end, people were pushing him to, to the front of the players to get yeah. the applause from the fans and not embarrassed, but he was, um, yeah, he was really, he was, he was, yeah, he was a little bit embarrassed. But that just shows you how level headed, how professional, um, he is. You forget he's still only what 21 years old, yeah, yeah, um, but not absolutely made up for him. Took a lifetime for the ball to hit the back of the net. We were, <laughs> um, in the stand behind the goal opposite to where the um, the goal went in and it took us a few seconds to realise A, it had gone in and B, realise it was Max Clareworth who scored the winner. Yeah. Um, but you make a good point about the pitch as well. Those extra two or three yards yeah. um, throwing line to the box has probably helped that land on Max's head. Irony. As opposed to aiming for a flick on at the front post. So... Thank you very much, Colchester. Yeah, it is. I was just I watched it back again just before we came online. And it's um there was some sort of cover or something that George Evans has to step over to do that long throw as well. Um I don't know if it's a rain cover or what it is or a sponsorship sort of uh uh sign, but you watch I'm watching him trying to delicately walk and you know not fall over when he's taking the throw. Watch it back, it's really interesting. <laughs> Because uh, you could imagine him catching his feet there, and well, maybe he does something different, and the game turns out different, and we're a little bit, you know, we're a little bit more nervous going into last night. So, um, I think officially, if you, you can see on the uh, on the on the um, FopMob uh, website there, they gave Max Clareworth man of the match. Uh, the goal would obviously help him, but I'm, I'm not sure you could argue too much with that, would you? Was there anybody else that you would think you would definitely barge out of Max's way to get that? I think that was a good shout for Max because he was good again, wasn't he? He was really good again. Yeah, he's putting in seven or eight out of tens every single game now. Yeah, It's almost expected. And when you add the goal, the winning goal on as well, um, yeah. I have to say O'Connell was very good again. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah, I agree. Anybody else, Richie, that you'd have sort no, of... No, I was just, just going to say uh, on Max, I think his his uh, performance has improved as well since O'Connell's come into the team. I think he, yes. he talks him through. I think he's at ease. Um, you know, they, they, they suit each other's game really well. They both can play football, which helps on yeah. the floor. Um, and just another one on Max... Brian Flynn was in the boxes last night. Did went round uh, the sponsors' boxes. Oh, okay. And um, he, they asked Brian Flynn. They said, "Do you think Max could play in the Premier League?" And he said, "Give him two or three years. Yes, he will." Oh, to be fair, he'd say anything. Uh... <laughs> he's not usually wrong, Flynn. Is to be fair to him. Yeah, well, he's, got, he's just spot a good player now and again. Yeah, I think. 
we won't have that debate because we don't need to. Um, but I think the Premier League would be a stretch for him. Um, he's you know, the pace that they play out in the Premier League, oof, gosh. Um, oh, well, but... not me now, a couple of years, you've got <laughs> no, to... I've, yeah. But you've 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 got and you've you've either got the inherent pace and agility or you haven't, haven't you? That's the you know he's not going to find two or three yards of pace, but we'll see. Let's let's hope we never have to. Let's hope the, we only have to worry about that when he's playing for us and not for somebody else. Well, um, there was a, there was a Premier League defender there last night. Who was there was to... there was Harry Maguire was getting tips of off uh, off uh, off Max last night because um, his brother needed him. Um, yeah, I think the only thing he did was have a shot from a few yards out. But we'll uh, we'll go on to that in a minute. Um, I, well, as I say, I thought it, it was a pretty unremarkable game, but a good win. Is there? Did anybody else have any highlights or anything else in that game that they thought was worth, you know, was worth talking about? Arthur's again dropping the yeah. ball. Yeah, yeah. He just, I've got, oh, I've got a controversial. It's not my opinion. I've got, I've had a controversial thought about Arthur. Do, do you want me to share it? Go on. Well, I've got. A, I've just got a niggling feeling, right, that Phil Parkinson it might try and find a much more experienced goalkeeper for next season. I agree with you. And I just, because Arthur, no, I'm not saying that's that's what I want to happen. I'm happy for us to have Arthur, but you you have to go, we're probably going to have to go through these growing pains again. And I don't know whether somebody in Parky's position with his resources, he might think, I don't need to go through that. I'm just going to go out and find a 20 seven-year-old that I won't have those growing pains with. Um, so I think it's going to be really interesting to see what, what happens. As I say, I that, that's not necessarily what I would do, but it wouldn't surprise me if Parky just goes out and goes, just get me an established number one that I don't have, the, you know, because we have a couple of moments with some of his with some of his passing and his kicking still. Um, and it, But he's just he's just this exceptional shot stopper. There was a stat going around today. I don't know if you, have you seen it, Alex, by chance. He's like one of the top. Is he like one of the top four or five in the shot stopping in the country? He's number one in the whole country. I think. Yeah. Ahead of the likes of Allison and Liverpool and the Lincoln City goalkeeper, I think, is in there as well. I think it's seventy eight percent or something like that. Which yeah, is. I've not seen a shot stopper at, certainly at Wrexham as good as him. No, I would agree. He's helped by his size, isn't he? That to be fair, yeah, um, you know that is the, that does help him out a lot. But still, you know, you've still got to move your feet. You've still got to do some other bits. But I, I just, I just wonder whether Parky's thinking to himself, "I don't need this. I'll just go. I'll just go and get myself a top-rate goalkeeper um, because I've got the budget and stuff to do it." So it'll be interesting in the summer. It'll be interesting. Um, I don't think anybody would be disappointed if he signed, would they? You know the clay, the calls are still there for him to sign. Uh, I think he's probably, you know, he's going to be cost next to nothing, so he's there if we want him. Um, it's just about, uh, yeah. Steve says Marriott was a good shot stopper. He was. I don't think he was Arthur because he hasn't got Arthur's size. That's the reason I, I uh, that's why I sort of say that. Jocelyn uh, the AB was the probably <laughs> the best shot stopper I've seen. Better than, uh, better than like. Better than a Conquo. Do you reckon? Better than any keeper, yeah. Oh. Yes, he had a clangor in him in terms of... Oh, I was gonna say, I'm sorry, I was going to say. Well, it wasn't to do with shots, though. He was coming for crosses, which he missed. Or yeah, he, had, he got the David James in the end, didn't he? He got that... that. Yeah. It's like he got dizzy when the ball was in the air. He lost his bearings. Yeah, but there was a season in 2012 where shots were going top corner and he'd make it look it easy. Just re yeah. You know, I, catching I, I, it as well, not just tipping it wide. He'd catch it. That's old um, school now, catching the ball, though. Isn't it? No, no one catches it anymore. They don't do that anymore. No. That's why he left, because he lost his bearings. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can understand why you would make that uh, make that sort of uh, that call a push. Um, OK, so um, Kevin Deard and Steve, Steve says Kevin Deard. Yeah, was he, good just, he was, yeah. Right? Um, we have had we have been lucky with some, but I just think he's exceptional for shot stopping. Um, as I say, giant helped helped greatly by his, his size. Um, mm. To be fair to him, um, have we had enough of Colchester? Then that was that was that that. Yeah, done. Nothing nothing else of note happened really, did it in that game? Um, and I guess it was all build up. It felt like it was all build up to 
last night, really. Um, I guess so. What was the situation? Who was there? Was Alex, were you there? But commentating, what were you? What was your situation? No, I needed a game off. I've got football fatigue. I've done all, all the right. aways, all the homes. I've got tickets for all the matches from now what, until what the end. Ex- of the what excuse that is. So, yeah, I, had, I watched it on the stream legally as well. You home. watched it legally yeah. on the stream. Richie, Eight what did you do? I was there. I was in the Wrexham Lager Stand. Oh, you were in the Lager Stand. Okay. Yeah. Um, the Lager Stand, interesting. Um, there was. Uh, we should have talked in the news about the fact that they're perhaps moving the dugout. Uh, that was uh, that's come up again last night. Uh, that's come up a few times now. Um, but uh, yeah, we'd watch out for that because uh, that's the, that seems to be the word that they'll move the dugout to the Mould Road side. They're going to uh, get rid of some seats uh, and put some sh- nice shiny dugout facilities in uh, on the Mould Road side. So uh, so, but anyway, you're in the Lager Stand. Um, what was it? What was your thoughts pre-match then? Did what were you thinking in the build-up to it? Were you nervous? Were you excited about a big game? What were you feeling? I thought it was going to be an exciting, good game. Um, yeah. Obviously, everyone sees the result they get at Mansfield, yeah. and they start thinking, "Oh, here we go, form team, very good away record." But we turn up in the big matches, don't we? Especially at home, we always do. We have done under Parky. We you know, generally, if, do. If you take the Grimsy one away, the big, big games. We turn up. We did it against Notts County last year, you know, and we did it against Mansfield and Good Friday. So, I knew. I thought. I thought we'd win. I didn't think it'd be as handsome as it was, um, but I was confident going into it. And I think this team sometimes they can they put in a performance like that, and you just think, where's it been all season? That sometimes because yeah. they were they were really good last night. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, any surprise in the, in the starting lineup when you got it, Alex, an hour before ish kickoff that uh, Palmer had come back in? Lee obviously had to start because McLean moved, didn't he? So, uh... yeah, all the signs um, and scenarios before the match led to that being the lineup. And I was very happy. I think that's our strongest team, what he played last night. Yeah. So, no surprises for me. We, he keeps trying periodically with Fletcher to give him that start in birth, and he's just never, ever been as effective, has he? As Richie says, I think give Palmer three matches, he'll run himself into the ground, he'll, oh, he'll do so much hard work. I just don't think he can play every game based on his work rate. <clears throat> but Fletcher, Parky probably picks and chooses which game is best for Fletcher. Yeah, and then use Palmer accordingly. Um, but yeah, that was, I think that's our strongest team. And I was very happy when I saw it. Okay. Um, I'd watched um, about four or five of their the highlights, you know, the two to five minute highlight packages that they put on YouTube. Yeah. I watched about the last five games um, yeah, uh, yesterday in the day, actually. Um, and before that, I'd kind of had a bit of a look at them. And I, what I'd noticed is they, they like to play almost suicidal football out from the back. And they're open and expansive. They're scoring goals. So you're not scoring four every week if you're playing defensive football, are you? So I thought that we'd definitely have a chance to score against them. If they were going to give Mullen chances like they gave... I mean, I don't know if you saw the Mansfield highlights, but the goalkeeper gave... Kelly and Dunn. Dunn. Yeah. Was he about 80, 20 yards out? 80, it might have been, he was roughly, he passed him the ball 18 yards out and he hit it over the bar, didn't he, with an empty goal? Um, so I thought if he does that to Mullen, we, you know, he's not going to do that. Um, so I thought we had a chance, but then, you know, I just thought, I thought we, we'd win it by a goal. So to, to get that performance, which was, I would say, is a ninth, I know we've conceded a goal in stoppage time, right? Which is a bit soft, a bit, that's just concentration. I thought that was our best 90 minutes of the season because I don't think we've had many 90 minute performances that we've had 45 minutes. Um, so, um, yeah, what, what do you what do you think then, Richie? You pulled the yes. face then when I said 90 minutes performance. No, I, I think it was, yeah. And uh, um, it's uh, what Steve Parkin said after the game is that they'd worked on how to play against Crawley because um, we do say that a few times we go to the home games and we think, have we had this team watched? Do, do we not know what they're going to do? <laughs> yes. Because um, it does get that impression. So, and they, they were quite prepared to give Crawley the ball, um, knowing the fact of that, you know, if it was a 
slip up or we got a foot in that on the counter attack on the break, you know, we were we were, we I've were got like, a point to make about that. Carry on, I've got a point yeah. to make about that. Um so I just yeah, I'd probably say at home it probably was the best. Morecambe was obviously enjoyable. Um would have been six nil as well. So but I think for a team who were in, in top form, uh undefeated, then I would probably go away with, uh, along with that and say, yeah, best performance of the season at home. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, OK. Um, I'll tell you what's probably the, the point I was going to make, Alex. So I'd seen that they like to pass it around at the back uh, and the goalkeeper will come and take take the ball. He's, 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 he didn't do it so much last night, um, but they will put him under pressure. They will allow him to carry the ball out and take risks. Oh, I'm going to say a nana like some of the positions he takes up, you know, daft positions. So I was I'll tell you what surprised me is that we didn't. What we did was what we do against all the big teams, really, which was sit back in a shape and wait to break it down. I was surprised that we didn't put them under pressure and press them. Um, what was your thoughts on the telly watching it? Because they obviously dominated the football. It was, I don't know, 65% possession in the end, something like that. And they looked, they played nice. It just looked like we were more ruthless and efficient. Yeah, I think 68 to 32 was the possession starts in favour of Crawley, which is... Um... I know we often give up possession, but um, it's very eye-opening that. I think all credit has to go to Phil Parkinson. Um, we executed our game plan perfectly. We know how Crawley play. They like to keep the ball. And as you say, they nearly conceded by giving the ball away in their penalty box against Mansfield. They conceded a goal against Doncaster the weekend before. Yeah, And we've seen that and we thought, right, we can sit back, let them keep the ball. We've got the legs, and we've got the defensive quality to sniff out any danger and get them on the counter and get the ball out wide. Um, so that was prime Phil Parkinson masterclass. All credit to the manager. Um, and like I say, we just it was the perfect game plan, almost the perfect game in general. Um, the big thing was we took our chances. Yes, we haven't been doing in certainly the home games against Harrogate and Tramia. Um, if you take your chances early on at home, you go 2 0 up, especially against a team like Crawley, you have to come out even come out more. Even more, yeah. Exactly. It makes those gaps even bigger. Um, and in the end, we had a bit of a field day. And I know I was a bit pessimistic at the start of the stream, but that performance has told me we're going up. It was a state, oh, it was a, I think it was, it's the type of performance that you, you kind of call it a statement signing, Rich, uh, it's a statement performance, Richie. You know, when you go and beat a, a good side, put three or four past them, um, and you know, other teams around it would have gone flipping heck, that was a good result, like. Yeah, I think a lot of people, um, looking at the sort of the league two pages, were a fancy Crawley for a draw, um, to maybe come and uh, take the game to Wrexham, and Wrexham would have to chase the game and maybe get grab a, a draw late on. That was the general census, but it is a massive statement that we made. Um, and I think it will be interesting what happens, not at our game, at other games, just because of the other teams' mindsets. Um, because at the moment now, you'd say nobody wants to come and play Wrexham at the moment. Um, I think that we've always had that fear factor of our home form, but that, the last two home games now have said to me, do you know what? we are actually as good as what what, what we say we are. Because obviously, like Alex said, we let ourselves down, we had a good trauma. You look at them now and you think, oh my God, how big a difference them other, you know, five points that we lost there could would have made. But yeah, I wouldn't want to come play us. And uh, let's just say it will all be all right on Saturday. <laughs> so uh, I thought it was quite interesting because there's been a little bit of debate about Elliot Lee. Um, lately, um, and obviously he got sort of rest. He got rested for half an hour before Mendy's hamstring went again on the on the on Saturday, um, and then had to come on. Um, but and last night he, he looked a bit out of sorts that he kept falling over and giving the ball away in the first five minutes. It was really weird, um, and there was people behind me screaming for him to be taken off. Um, but then he puts that ball in for Barney, um, which you, you, I, I don't know if you could tell how he put that in, Richie, but um, I, Alex, you'd have had the best view on the telly, I'm guessing, because you might have had the benefit of a replay. I think it is his head I think, in the end, but the ball from from Elliot Lee is just like, it's 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 just outstanding, isn't it? Yeah, 
And I think that's why Parky's persevered with him for so long, um, despite putting in substandard performances. Um, he has got that moment of quality. Um, and he was a peach of a ball. Literally couldn't have placed it any better. It's hit Ryan Barnett's face, by the way, not his head. Uh, it's, it's, it is his nose. It's him by ear. It's his nose then or something, hasn't it? Yeah. Somewhere on the face. Yeah, but well, good finish, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not sure you know much about that if it's in the face, do you? Exactly, yeah. I'm not sure if that counts as a header or not, to be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah, quality ball by Elliot Lee. And after a shaky 10 minutes, like you say, Matt, where he was falling, slipping, giving the ball away, I thought he actually had a half-decent game. Um Actually, not half decent, it's being harsh. I thought he had a decent game. Yeah. Not to the level of Elliot Lee, which we saw at the start of the season, but better than what we've seen in previous weeks. I don't think you'd be saying that if he scores the header. Uh, if that header goes in, because oh, the, yeah. the hits the post, then you go in, he's got an assist and a goal, and you, it possibly possibly feels a bit different. But um, I get I get the sentiment, though. Um, that's the thing. It was... Uh, oh, go on, was, Al. Go on, Rich. It, it, was, it was different watching him uh, side on view. Okay. Because uh, normally, obviously, I'm behind the goal where you are, and you actually see his movement a little bit more. Um, and he did have a he did have a good game last night. Obviously, that 30 minute power nap was um, did, did <laughs> in the world good, yeah. Club, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but no, he, he, he just said, just some of the runs he makes. Um, it doesn't come off all the time, but yeah. you see him, you watch, and you think, you know what? That's why he's a, he's a le- he's a level above where he is now. Yeah. Um, just the things that he can see on a football pitch and the runs. And like you say, he tries them sometimes. You go, oh, what are you doing giving the ball away there? But if it gone, if the actual ball gets through, everyone's like that. Wow, what, what a player. You know, it's just, it's make or break, isn't it, sometimes? Yeah, well, I was I had two things to say. He's a victim of this, the, the position and what we ask him to do in creating. You have got to, you've got to make three or four passes to get one assist probably, haven't you? I don't know what, yeah. there's probably a, there probably is actually a, a, a stat for that. Um, so you've got to, that, that is what you've got to do. So you, you are going to uh, misplace or, uh, or whatever some passes. And I still don't think, I still think, I don't think his performance is, is, has been as bad as what people have said. I think his end product hasn't been as good. And that's, that's been the difference. Point, I still yeah. think he's been working and running um, and doing all the, all that stuff. Just think when he if it, it, it gets a bit frowned upon when he doesn't get an assist or a goal because he was at the start of the season he you know he got what was it about eleven goals in that yeah. first twenty odd games or whatever it was, um, so yeah that the uh, the next goal though the Mulling goal Alex was a thing of beauty wasn't it? Yeah, total football all round. Um, great ball into the box. Cannon. The, the run Cannon. for Cannon again is like we'll, uh, lung we'll get, busting, should we call it? We'll get on to Cannon, I think. We'll get yeah. on to Cannon. Um, no, there's nothing you can do as a defender when the ball gets flashed between goalkeeper and defenders. Yeah, You touch it, it's probably an own goal. If you leave it, especially with a player like Mullen around, it's a tapping. Um, no, great football, good goal, good finish. And Mullen coming into form at the right time of the season as well. Even better. Yeah, yeah. I thought. I mean, that was and that the the how quick it was. You know how close together those two goals were. That was probably that's probably that was a knife in the definitely a knife in the heart for Crawley Richie. Won it. That took all the game plan is definitely out the window then, isn't it? Whatever their game plan was. Um, yeah. I think they. To be honest, I think their game plan is just be very attacking at the moment, and it either works or it doesn't. Um, uh, and it's you know it's it's worked for them for a while, but obviously they just met a. Met a quality side in form at home, but uh, yeah, yeah. It, it was a great finish, um, quick play, and just on them, I, I was struggling how they'd scored so many goals because they yeah. don't seem to have a good striker. No, I get extent. that. A lot of footballers, good footballers, technically good on the ball, but they, they didn't have um, Fox in the box type of player, did they? No, they didn't have one. Yeah, no, I, 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 I can understand that watching them. Um, uh, we never looked in fear of any of them, to be honest, did no. we? No. Um, uh, uh, to be fair. Um, so the next goal, uh, Alex, um, is uh, the one you sort of, uh, you said you'll get on to him. Um, I think after the goal, I'm not sure whether they were trying to recreate the Lion King. <laughs> I don't know what, or whether that was just coincidence, but um, the... I, the great credit to Cannon for following up the shot, which was from Lee, if memory serves, but I could be yeah. wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think um, so. 
and um, to get to get a, just to get anything in from that angle was just it just sums him up as a player at the moment. To be fair, yeah, I thought that keeper should have done better with the initial shot. Um, I shouldn't really get be getting beat from that angle either. But all credit to Cannon to to decent, well, really good finish from a tight angle. And it just summed up his performance. He was the best player on the pitch um, on a pitch that included several decent performances from Wrexham players. But he, I don't often give 10 out of 10s, but I'm tempted to give Cannon a 10 out of 10 for this match because he was absolutely everywhere. His passing was spot on, an assist for Mullins first. Good finish for the goal himself as well. Um, absolutely superb performance from Andy Cannon. Ginger and Iesta, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I like that. Um, and there's been a debate about who the player of the season should be because there's loads of different options um, you could suggest at the moment. But he's just pipping it for me. Also because of the story he had at Crawley away when he got sent off. Yeah. And a lot of people were saying, oh, is he good enough for League Two promotion? Do we go with someone else? Ever since he came back into the team after that Crawley game, he's got better and better and better and better. And he's been a, a massive reason why we're very, very likely going to get promoted. Yeah, I, I was going to save the, the we'll, we'll save that player of the season talk for the end of the season when we've seen it all play out. Because I, But I've seen the talk and I think the problem we had is that we kind of had, we had a, a good player at the start, then we've had, we've had Max at the end. And I yeah. think... Andy Cannon might steal it for people because, like you say, for two thirds of the season, uh, since he came back after that uh, sending off, because it looked a bit dismal for him, did it? It's like, God, you know, he was he was not really in form. He then he got a red card, uh, and then he's just grown into this uh, this this role again. Um, he's probably I can understand why people might vote for him because for two thirds of the season, he probably has been. If not the best, he's been there or thereabouts. So therefore, um, you could you can say to him, he could you know he could have that, can he? Yeah, I don't think any player has had a full season of playing well. Like you say, Lee, he was good for the first third. Clareth wasn't in the team at the start of the year. Same with O'Connell. So you're making a decision on who's had the best two thirds or three quarters of the season. Yeah. It's hard to pick between Mullen, O'Connell, Clueworth, Cannon. Very tricky one this season. Very tricky one. Yeah. Uh, Kim's just made an interesting point. Crawley's one of the youngest teams. Uh, and guess which team is the oldest? Oh, I, I'm going to guess that that is ours. Um, uh, that would be my uh, that would be my guess because because of the uh, the the experience that we've decided to bring in um, rather than anything. Um, uh, and I, I did see this as well that I've, uh, Steve's just pointed out that Andy Cannon could this could be his third promotion in three years. I think it is. Is it? Yeah, three in a row. Stockport, yeah. he was there. Then obviously he came to us and we got promoted. And now he's still here and we might get promoted. Should we say at the moment? Um, I mean that is you know uh, if, if that and, and he's been a mainstay of those teams in the end, hasn't he? So if you uh, if you look at that, that's uh, oh it was Mansfield. I thought you were in. Kim's, Kim's tricked us. She said it's Mansfield is the oldest team. I thought she was trying to imply that it was us. So that surprises me. And maybe that answers why they uh, they tire at the end and fall apart a bit. Aiden um, Flint's about 60, isn't he? Or he plays like, <laughs> he plays <laughs> like he's 60. Um, Be interesting, though. You know, just obviously, um, Elliot League has put forward, wasn't he, as one of the players of the season for the for the league. A, M. Jody Jones, wasn't it? And, um, and Del Keller Dunn. Yeah. If I was picking a team of the season, I would probably have Andy Cannon in it. Team for the league, team for the season. Yeah. I would have Andy Cannon in it ahead of Elliot Lee. Probably. Yeah, yeah. It's the goals and assists yeah. you see, that, yeah. that uh, attract the attention, not yeah. the performances. And what's become very clear to me, looking at some of those online sites that pick a team of the week and stuff, is that they're not looking at performances. True. They're looking at who's got a couple of goals or who's got a couple of assists. Because that often happens with our games that the, the best player on the pitch isn't in their team of the team of the week. Uh, but somebody who scores a goal is. Gets in, gets so in, yeah. uh, I think, uh, I don't know whether they're using 
just some algorithms or what analysis they're using, but they're not watching the games. Is what is is what I would I I would sort of say. Um, I just wanted to touch on before we go on to Mullins' last goal and, and their goal, if you wanted to talk about it, but it was it was just an annoying little uh, sod of a goal, really. Um, it's the, you mentioned somebody there before, Alex. Um, before Andy Cannon sort of peaked in the game last night. I'd sort of I'd seen another really good uh, Owen O'Connell performance, um, and I'd seen him very definitive, definitively like he it started against Gillingham for me. That's when I first really saw it, where he just definitely was trying to play shorter balls from the back, um, and we tried to play that way. And then if we needed to, then he would clip the little balls over the top. But his main out ball was actually Tom O'Connor. He liked that ball last night and let O'Connor play balls down the line. But I thought he was really good again last night. Um, and he would have been, possibly would have been my second, if not man of the match. And but Cannon probably eclipses it for the assist and the goal. Uh, but I thought he was really good again last night. <laughs> yeah, he's been excellent again ever since he came into the team. As much as I love Toza and everything that he's done for Wrexham mm. over the past um, three seasons, I just think we look a much, much better team with O'Connell at the uh, the heart of the three. And last night was just um, typical of his performances ever since he came into the team. He's so good on the ball. Yeah. So good. Um, obviously, you don't play for Celtic by accident. He's got that pedigree. Um, his passing... But not just his passing, the high balls over the top. He's not afraid to chest it down, to take yeah. a touch instead of simply heading it clear, Yeah. Um, which a lot of players in League 2 probably do. He's got that extra bit where he can bring it down, take a touch, and like you say, play a pass into midfield or play a square ball into Tom O'Connor. But he's a Rolls-Royce of a defender, absolute yeah. Rolls-Royce. Um, and another one who can easily win player of the season. He's been absolutely fantastic. He's, uh, and we will come on to that last morning goal in a minute, Richie, but him and Max coming into that back three has kind of, I don't want to say changed, it's solidified, it's made us a bit more solid at the end of the season. Um, how long have they been in now? Would it be about 12 games or something? Could be. Uh, is it January they came in? Oh, is yeah, it that long it, ago? Maybe it, maybe it's more than I thought, but yeah. The Gillingham, Gillingham game is January, January the 10th around there. But I don't think we... I don't think we get promoted if O'Connor hadn't played at the back. Because, yeah. And I'll tell you why he looks so good as well, his reading of the game. That's why he never gets caught out of possession. He doesn't have to be a quick, you know, really quick at the back. He, he could, he's got to turn the pace, don't get me wrong, but he's just he knows where the ball's going to be, which is, as a centre-half, a ball playing three at the back is fantastic. He just reads it so well, and he can let their players have the ball because he knows if he's in that certain position, he's blocking a shot or he's passing him on to uh, onto another player. But yeah, I think that was a, a big turning point was when Max and uh, O'Connell both started to get that bit of a, a bit of a partnership at the back. And then, you know, we can't forget it's been unlucky on Boyle, isn't it? As well, really. Yeah, he was, he, 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 he was a bit harsh on him, uh, but you can see why he did it, can. can't you? Yeah, of course you can. Um, you play your best team, your strongest team when they're all available. Yeah, yeah, he got a bit of criticism. Was it the Donny game? People criticised him a bit because he got caught under the little bit of the ball a fraction, um, and he misses the header, doesn't he, to potentially equalise in that game for us. Uh, but that they weren't horrendous mistakes, no. you know. No, um, they were mistakes that anybody could have made. Um, so yeah, he will he will be a little bit, you know, he'd be thinking, well, that was a bit unlucky there to be uh, to be out of that side. Um, but let's let's. I guess we, we like we round it around that game up with uh, with uh, the the man, the myth, the legend in the, Paul Mullin, and that's a Paul Mullin goal. If ever I've seen a Paul Mullin goal, Alex, I, I, I was just when I was watching it back before, I just thought tenacity, bit of class in the finishing. You know the fact that he runs it down when other forwards might have given up on it, um, and you know um, I just I think that says everything about the man. Yeah, reminded me of Paul Mullin. The National League, Paul Mullen, he was on fire week in, week out. Probably National League defending as well from their player, trying to play it back to the yeah. goalkeeper. But like you say, not everyone chases that ball down and not everyone finishes it as composed 
um, as Mullen did, because it kissed the post on the way yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's why he scored 21 league goals now this season. He's catching up to Langstaff, isn't he? he? Whisper it quietly. He's only four behind Langstaff. So, uh, oh, break... is, he still, is he still playing? Is he Langstaff? <laughs> he finished in February. They've stopped talking about him now. They talk about Jatter all the time because I think they know Langstaff's probably going to go. So it's all about Jatter now. Yeah. Um, so don't put it past Mullin sneaking up and getting the golden boots as well. Yeah. Uh, Luke is in the house. Luke has got a big, as just pointed out, he's got a big day. Uh, he's an MK Dons oh. fan, and obviously they've got a massive game on Saturday uh, where they uh, I'm not sure whether they're home or away to Mansfield. Oh. They're, they're home. home. They're home. Oh, right. Okay. They're home. Come um, on, Mansfield. I, uh, we won't talk about this, the daft goal. Um, uh, uh, yeah, Kim says Crawley looked like North County on that goal. That's, ex- I mean, they are just, they are just very attacking, expansive. Naive is what Crawley are at the moment, but they, 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 it's got them a little run. But you know, against a good side, I think they'll get picked off. So if they play like that in the playoffs, they might struggle. Um, they might need to find something uh, different. Go on, Richie. You're itching to I say gonna, something. I was going to say, if Richie's going to say they're going to win the playoffs, I could see it. No, yeah, because oh. if they get to the playoff final on Wembley, a big pitch like that. They will absolutely muller somebody on a big pitch. Yeah, because they did Wembley. play some. They played they, some nice stuff, you know. They do, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's fair. That's credit to them. Um, unfortunately, hopefully that won't be us. We won't oh, be, it won't be us. We hopefully, won't be it us. won't be us. Because um, no. uh, Alex is going to tell us what we need to do um, uh, uh, before we do our preview. Alex is the man who has looked at all the permutations. <laughs> he probably read them on Twitter. I don't know where he got them from, but last night he confidently uh, tweeted out what needs to happen on Saturday. So um, before we talk, Forest Green, tell us. Um, what 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 the potential uh, potential routes to success are for us on Saturday? So Wrexham can win promotion to League One on Saturday if we beat Forest Green Rovers at home. Yeah, and MK Dons don't beat Mansfield. Yeah, so and... that's possible, isn't it? That's, po- yeah. that's possible. That you know that could easily be a draw or a loss, even though they're at home. That is, it's not. We're not stretching here, are we? Oh yeah, Mansfield, despite being in poor form, are um, to the they'll get a bit of confidence team. from last night. I know it's only Forest Green, but they'll get some confidence back from that. Yeah, so we need MK Dons to not win against Mansfield, and we would also need Barrow not to win away at Gillingham. Um, as we know, Gillingham is uh, Gillingham. Are, I'm going to bring the. T- I'll have a look at the table. They're not mugs, and they were they were looking for a playoff place, weren't they? And they're They've fallen off a little bit, 60, but they are still just right there. You know, with a good couple of results, they can be there. So, again, that's not a, that's not a team that's on the beach, is my point. Um, it, you know, that's they've got nothing to play for and are just sort of seeing the season out. It's, 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 if they lose on Saturday, their season is over, Gillingham, probably. Um, so, that, so, there's something there. So, that, this is possible. This isn't a 1,000 to 1 shot, is it? Every single one of those scenarios is the most likely scenario. Obviously, yeah. we're heavy favourites to beat Forest Green. I think a draw or a Mansfield win is more likely than an MK Dons win. And we also think a Gillingham win or a draw is more likely than a Barrow win. So it's very, not very likely. I think Saturday, there's a very strong chance we could go up on Saturday. <laughs> Alex is saying, get the champagne in the fridge ready. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> get the corkscrew out, get the glasses out. <laughs> what I don't want to happen is we win, MK Dons drop points, but Barrow win. Because if Barrow then don't win on Tuesday, yeah, we would get promoted without having Play a match. It. We wouldn't be at the ground. Well, we're not going to be in crew anyway, most of us. <laughs> well, speak for yourself. Um, I just hope it doesn't come to that. I hope it gets sorted at Forest Green or at Crew, and uh, maybe we go into the Crew game not losing by ten goals or something like that. Um, it'd be a bit of an anti-climax to to go up without kicking a ball, but we would take it. Of course, we would take it. Okay, go on, Richie. You were about to make a point. I was going to say, I think we should do. Uh, if it goes to Tuesday, we should go live and do our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> taking place on Tuesday. <laughs> 
do a live watch along. And, well, we did uh, we did a live transfer, and I think that would be a because I think um, I actually think that Mansfield will beat MK on Saturday um, because even though they lost to Crawley Mansfield four one, they still had twenty two shots on goal or twenty two attempts. Sorry, yeah. which is mad, isn't it? For a, a, t- a game that you lose four one. Especially um, a top side as well. Yeah, it's not you know, these are not mugs, are they? No. Um but it's just that it's it's Barrow, isn't it? Um annoying Barrow. They're the uh, they're the ones. But let's the outlier. just hope uh, let's just hope Gillingham can pull something out of the bag for us as well. Not that we're ask you know, we're not desperate for them to do it. We'll go up if, it doesn't matter what day of the week we go up. We'll do it either in Crew or Stockport, either way. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's nice if uh, it's nice to do it in front of our fans, isn't it? I agree with Kim. I, Mansfield won't want the if Mansfield drop out to the playoffs. I think it's a bit like the, our talk. Remember last last season, we were saying if we end up in the playoffs after all this, it'd be so deflating. Um, I think Mansfield might be uh, might be similar. They uh, And they've got a bit of history, haven't they, of falling away. Um, so they will not want to be in the playoffs at all, I don't think. Um, and there's always that team that comes late in there and sneaks in and gets a, starts their run of form by sneaking in and then becomes a problem in the uh, in the playoffs. Lancaster Rovers. Could well, be yeah, yeah. Uh, or a Gillingham or somebody like that, you see, who, yeah. who, over a couple of games now might uh, might become problematic. Um, are we Have we given the title away to any other side yet? Or are we? Um, uh, does anybody still think it's up for grabs? Because I've given it away, I have. I think it's gone. Um, not giving it away. I'm losing hope. It's Stop one hand. Going. Passing it over with one hand. Eh? Is that, is that Reluctantly, it? yeah. I think Stockport would need to drop points in two of their next three matches before they play us. I just think the form they're in and the teams they're playing as well, oh. I think they'll, they won't they will drop points in two matches. So More come on Saturday at home, haven't they? So. Yeah. More come than they've got Notts County and then Accrington. No. It's, so, it's just so unlikely. Yeah. Unless they go to Marbella for a couple of days or something. <laughs> but no, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Forest Green will arrive at the race course and they will definitely set up to be hard to beat, won't they? They'll definitely set up because of where they are. So um, it's slightly skewed at the bottom because Colchester have played two games less than Forest Green and Sutton. And Grimsby have played a game less than some of them. So it's getting a bit messy down there. Um, but they they won't come here to try and play football. I think they'll surely they'll come here to try and get a point, won't they? Is a point enough? It's I'm better than sure. no points for him at the at our home ground, isn't it? Surely that's what they'd be thinking. Yeah. I think for 70, 75 minutes, they're going to shut up shop, try and go into that last 15 minutes Bet level, pieces. or maybe just one goal behind, and then throw everything at us. Um, they're going to do a Bradford, really. That's... Yeah, probably <laughs> do a Bradford and or a Harrogate or a Tramia, which... To be fair, it has worked this season for those teams. Yeah, I just don't think Forest Green have got the the quality um, to keep us out at home. The form we're in, um, I think they've conceded seventy two goals in forty three matches, which is up there with the the most in the league. The form we're in, I know football's not one on paper, but all signs point to a Wrexham win on on Saturday. Um, I just don't think Forest Green have got the quality, defensive capability to to keep us out for ninety minutes. I, th- I say I, I say this a lot, and I don't think statistically this is the uh, the case. But uh, is this is this a, a, for Wrexham, Richie? Is it first goal wins on Saturday? Really, if we get that first goal and get it early, the game plan, the Forest Green game plan, which I agree with Alex, which is probably you know. Don't overcommit to start with. Goes out the window a bit for them, doesn't it? Yeah, I think um, I think if the two 0 down at half time, I think they might open up a little bit because they have got to win it. Really, you just looked at the fixtures for like Sutton. Sutton they got two out of three hard games really. So Sutton's easiest game is probably Saturday because they got Harry got away. But I think the floodgates can open Saturday as well. And oh, when Alex God. predicted, Alex <laughs> predicted about Mullin overtaking Langstaff. I think he's got a hat trick coming to start with. Because, <laughs> listen, the vegan sausage rolls, they won't be doing anything in training this week. No. Oh, God. I wish you wouldn't say things like this, Richie. It makes me nervous. No. Not, nothing to be nervous about now. 
Um, uh, Kim thinks Forest Green is going to get thumped as well. I mean, um, we just, um, I think Steve was saying one point's possibly not enough for, uh, no. uh, for, for them. I mean, if they come and try and play, I well, haven't said that. We've seen Dover come and nearly cause us a problem. Um, if they come and try and play, surely they're playing into our hands again on Saturday. Yeah, I think all signs point to Forest Green sitting back for 70 minutes and trying to nick a goal. Um, they need to win looking at the table. I know Colchester, they're not guaranteed to get anything from those two games in hand, but Colchester gave us a good game. They gave Stockport a good game last night as well, missed a penalty. Um, I just think if Forest Green want to stay up, they need to win um, two of the last three matches. Um Richie's got a stat or something coming here. Go on, like, he's so excited. He was like, he put, <laughs> his, he put his hands up. All I say is, after Forest Green players, they've got more come away and then they've got Notts County at home. So you could actually potentially see them winning both them. Um, so, you know, by getting nothing from us, suits us, obviously, but they've obviously got a couple more games where they are more winnable. Yeah, that's game. yeah. That's why I say they... Um... I'm not sure that you'd come here and start to go gung ho, desperate. Um, I think you've got to win it a different way, haven't you? Uh, I think Alex is right. You win it by a set piece in the 80th minute or something, don't you? If you, you know, that's yeah. what their plan will be. To be fair, goal difference may come into it. Forest Green a minus 30, Sutton a minus 25. So maybe Forest Green, if we if they if we do go two 0 up, maybe they say right, let's just sit back, keep it at two 0 fight for our lives. Yeah, who knows? Okay, so from a from a lineup point of view, um, we know Mendy's out the equation now. Um, so um, I think I, I would I don't think there's any chance that McFadden's going to start and we're going to move McLean into midfield. Are we goalkeepers set? Back three is set. There's no chance Boyle comes back in now. Is unless there's injuries, which we don't know about. That back three will be the same. Um, any changes anywhere on the uh, like? Does Barnett come out or anything for you, Richie? I, I for Bolton, I don't. I couldn't see it myself, but you know. No, no, it's the same team. Uh, that's what I'll be putting into my fan hub. Doing yeah. quite well actually last few weeks, so I might be able to get you two a t-shirt soon. <laughs> um and then I get the only is there any chance? So there's two positions, I guess, then Elliot Lee's position. Is there any chance, Alex, that anything different happens with Elliot Lee, given the fact that there's been a lot of talk that he needs a rest and other it does does Parky do anything with Elliot Lee? I think he just lets him play now, don't he? And if he breaks down, he has to deal with it in the last game or so. Just playing. We've got three games left. Um, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. So no Tuesday ones in there either. Just playing. And we saw sparks of the old, or the start of the season, Elliot Lee, in last night's match as well. So yeah, just playing. I'm not sure who you'd replace him with, to be honest. Well, I mean, at a stretch of Jordan Davis or something, you know, just something random out of, you know. If you were desperate to give him a rest, you'd have to find a way, wouldn't you, somehow? Mm -hmm. Um that's uh, that's that's what I was thinking. And then up front, um, I know what Alex's opinion is, so let's do this one with you, Richie. Is there, any, like Steve has said, Fletcher may start. Is there any chance for you that Fletcher starts that game? It'd be Dolby, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, he said this last week. It just wouldn't surprise <laughs> Dolby. If he, it won't surprise me. I will not. I will. I. I, I just it wouldn't. No, Palmer will start again. Um... I think Fletcher played in the away game, did he, at Forest Green, if I remember, from the start, I think. And he oh, didn't, I can't he, remember. Yeah, he didn't, it wasn't very, didn't work much. I think, um, I think Palmer will start again. I think yeah. um, he suits, he, if you've got a winning, winning formula, why change it? Is um, Well, bec because he does. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. But, but in hindsight, I think the way he seems, the way it links up, he, you know, he brings, I think you get the best out of Elliot Lee and Mullin when you've got Ollie Palmer in the team. Um, and I think until the end of the season, that's what we've got to go with. Yeah, it is. Um, just to get it over the line. Do you know what I, I was watching? I was I was listening to a lot of the a lot of what people have said and written about the front two, uh, and I've watched Stephen Fletcher come on and have an impact and not have the impact when he starts. Uh, and I've 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 listened to a lot of people say, "Oh, Ollie's 
Mullin's best partner because he does all the work and he runs off the ball. But when you watch the goals back, you don't actually see a lot of that. But what I will say is what Ollie does that the others what Ollie does best is he doesn't get in Mullin's space. He knows where Mulls wants to be, and Ollie will go and do his work somewhere else. Uh, and that I think that is the secret for him. Um, is that you know uh, that that's like last night Moles is what six yards out centre of the goal. I, I couldn't see how far in he was. Alex might have a better idea for that first goal. It looked like he was six yards out when he when he taps it in. Those are the types of things that uh, Ollie's just not in his way because um, they because they've got that history of what's it been now two and a bit years two years whatever it's whatever it's been yeah um, I think that is the secret for him. Um, I think Parky obviously just gets frustrated that Ollie's not getting the goals because you can't just have Mullin scoring all the time. And I think that's why he keeps searching um, with um, with Fletcher. Um, but I think, I, I don't, there's no way, Alex, that you think Fletcher's start, it's going to be Palmer, isn't it? No, Unless he's we injured. Often, we often see Fletcher start when it's Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, just because yeah. Ollie needs a bit of a rest, but... I think now, because we're just Saturday, Saturday, Saturday for now until the end of the season, I think Palmer will be, will be starting all three matches. Yeah, I agree. Um, but we saw a little Marriott cameo again. Um, I guess more of a cameo last night than we uh, than we did uh, before. Uh, anybody got, I guess, and, and anybody think he's going to play much? No. Impact. So I'd like to see him score before the end of the season. He needs a goal, doesn't he? He needs a goal. For a goal. And if we he are needs... in a comfortable position against Forest Green on Saturday, do we give him half an hour and just say I'd have given him longer. I'd have given him longer, longer to be honest. Last night, I I I actually tweeted. I think, uh, or I put it in the group. One of the groups. I said at three 0 I'd have taken Mullin off and put Marriott on. And ironically, Mullin then scores the fourth. But I still think that I would have been resting. A couple of those players a bit earlier, to be honest, last night. Yeah, I think, um, well, it's typical parky substitutions, isn't yeah. it? And I think they did all five near enough, didn't they, before we did one? I mean, they had subs, they, they were off. doing subs in the 50th minute. I said to the lad next to me, I said, Are you allowed to do that? I said, I said Can we check the rules? I'm not sure you can do <laughs> that. Just to start on the strikers, I think I read somewhere between Dalby, Fletcher, and Palmer, it's one goal in the last 13, 14 games. Yeah. And you can see, you know, that's it's a good job that Mullins it for him, isn't it? Really, um, yeah. is it 11 in 10 with two assists? Something like yeah. that, yeah. yeah. You know, that's um, it's a good job he's found his form, found his fitness again because we'd struggle otherwise, wouldn't we? I think we're going to have some really interesting conversations perhaps in the summer around what this squad looks like because obviously there's a raft of players who are free agents, but I think there is one or two that we will, if we get the opportunity, we will evolve. Um, that might surprise us, um, and that might be strikers and uh, and, uh, and other positions. Um, um, what's um, score wise? What would your prediction be? Is it Wrexham by a one goal, two goals? God, Richie, here we go. I'll go last. Your Richie's going last because go on, Alex. What do you think? I know Richie's going to say six nil or something. Yeah, it's going to be like something like that. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to go in there early and say Wrexham by two goals then. I'm going to say we're going to score early, which will help massively. And we'll just pick them off after that. 3-0 Wrexham. So Wrexham by three. I'm going by two. Alex is going by three. Drum roll. I can't. I've got no fake drum roll. Come on, Richie. What's it? I don't think Alex isn't old enough for this. You might just be a little bit. What was the score when we got promotion? We beat Rotherham at home. Oh, it was about 6-1 six, six, or so. I can't remember. 7-1. So that's it. Right. There we go. Seven, you think one. it could be a big one? Yeah, I think it Basically, will be. Basically, you think it could be a riot. And we, we might even sing, put it on the show, if that's all right with Paul Mullin. Um, we'll put that on. <laughs> <Singing that. laughs> we have to submit that first for approval, do we? Yeah, or... <laughs> yeah. Do your song list now. They do do the players list, don't they, in the programme? We'll have to put fans lists. Uh... <laughs> yeah, we have to send them through to... Uh, for, for, for a th that, oh, yeah, you can do that one, lads. We're all right. Um <laughs> Uh, I agree with Kim. I think the turnover will be because we we need. Well, as you could talk yeah. about it for an hour, can't you? But you know, you you if we are in League One, there's going to be some players that are going to be an upgrade. Steve's going five one. Um, that's uh, that's a brave one. Um, uh, and we will. Uh, I, I 
Jesse asked about uh, any tips for the upcoming summer window. I don't know what you mean by tips, really. Uh, I'd need to understand what you meant by that, but um, uh, I, 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 maybe that means where players players coming in and players going out possibly is what that's uh, referring to. Um, and the reality is they'll be working on that in the background, but won't have got those conversations too deep because they don't know which league they're going to be in. So it's hard to get so deep into those conversations with agents and players, isn't it? Because you will want the best players, but some of them might only play in League One. They might not want to drop down to League Two. So... Uh, so that's uh, that. Those are difficult conversations to have at the moment, aren't they? You, it's obvious that retention, the retained list, will be interesting because obviously uh, that's a bit easier because that's in your control, isn't it? Those players, you're just going to renew them or you aren't. Um, and I don't know. You won't need more than a post-it note for that. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that you know there'll be a there will be a few there that'll uh, that'll go, but we will we'll 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 save that for. Uh, oh, I see. Jesse said, "How do I survive the chaos?" To be honest, it's 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 only chaos at the end of the transfer window, isn't it? It's on that last day is the chaos. It's only Before chaos that where we don't sign anyone on the last day. Well, because <laughs> you have to find something to talk about. <laughs> Before that, it's not too bad. Uh, it's just deadline day is the uh, is the drama. Uh, but in theory, you should have a, a well-run club will have its business done by deadline day, won't they? Is the reality you'll have you'll have done it there. So, uh, so we'll see. Uh, Aaron, I've just last point. Aaron said I could see a signing a younger version of Ollie in the summer. You've got one, mate. His name is Samuel Dolby, uh, and uh, a Parky really, really likes him. Uh, so uh, I, I'm not sure that he's I, much as we'd like to. I'm not sure he's going anywhere. Does anybody? Well, I. I it's too big a conversation to start that. Maybe we'll save it. We'll save it because otherwise we could be here for hours, couldn't we? Um, Just on the on the player of the season to add to Alex's list, I think McFazdin because he's been consistent all year. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> but, ah. <laughs> Just, uh, you know, come on. Uh, Alex has said he's starving and we need to hurry up. Thanks. <laughs> no, we're done. We're done. What are you having, Alex? Do you know yet? Are you... And chicken sausages, mashed potato, and some veg. Oh, and you're making that yourself, or have you ordered it from somewhere? <laughs> no, last week was a treat. This oh, one's, okay. uh, I'm making it this time. No cheat meals this week. No. Uh, and Richie, have you? What have you done for tea tonight? We've already had a pizza, I have, because we oh. had a, a later see? start than we see. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So it's a bit, a bit easier. Are you uh, uh, my squid in it Saturday here, or? Uh, at home, my squin. Yeah. yeah. What are you commentary duties, Alex, or what's your situation? No, going as a fan. So I'm going to have a few beers probably at the my squin. All right. So I'll look out for you both. Yeah, do that. Uh, and you've got to look after me on Saturday because on Sunday I'm running 26.2 miles. So, uh, uh, yeah, it'll be orange juice and water only. <laughs> Uh, is, is, is what I'll say. No limbs in the tech end. You might get injured. I, I, t I tell you what, honestly, I've got bruises on my shins yeah. from some weeks in the tech end uh, when they, when you're on the seats. Uh, and the amount of times I've broken seats in the tech end from jumping on the one in front of me <laughs> to give it to the away fans uh, is uh, I'd need two hands. I've, I've got a problem because I'm in the temp stand for the first time and I was looking at it last night and if it's a pitch invasion... We have to keep, take a couple of harnesses, I think, to get in. I saw, I saw somebody else say that it's about it's about eight foot drop or something in it. Or... There's the the pitch covers are there, sort of folded over. Yeah, so that's your landing mat. And then it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit like gladiators. You've got to go down one, and you've got to run six yards, and then beat go over the other advertising boards. All right. So we just okay. need a good steward, give them a tenner, and open the gate. I think. Yeah, I think you'll have to uh, you'll have to uh, slide somebody a note, yeah, uh, and see. Um, so yeah, okay. Uh, we'll leave it there. Um, Alex is hungry. Uh, Richie's got more important things to do. Uh, we could be in League One the next time we chat. We could be. We could be. We, we'll come back as the League One rec. No, we'll. That's ambitious. Let's not tempt fate. Uh, let's just say we'll come back. Uh, oh, Steve said they might open up a gate. Yeah, they might do. They might open just, up a gate. If, you know, if he's got any tips or he knows anyone who works there. Yeah. Just if let you me know. Tell us which steward to, uh, <laughs> to give the nod to uh, so that you can get on. Uh, I'll be vaulting over the uh, over the Tekken um, uh, whenever I can. Uh, I'd rather do it against Stockport, to be honest, so they can't do their trophy lift. They I'd rather us just invade the pitch and not move, and they have to do something at their own ground or something. The trophy will be given before that, I think. If they've won it, yeah. 
Yeah, if they've won it uh, is the key. So, yeah, Steve says it's happening. All right. Thanks very much to you two uh, and to everybody else who stayed with us. Thank you very much. And we'll come back next week and see which see which league we're in. Yeah. yeah. All right. Take it easy, everybody. If I don't see you before. All right.